Hey guys, Jocelyn here with Fantasia Elegance. As promised, today I'll be showing you how to make this cute little wire-wrapped pumpkin pendant. It's a fun mix of elegant and cute, and as you can see, it just uses wire, so it's pretty easy to make. This design does use two different kinds of wire. I'll be using some 18 gauge round dead soft wire, and some 20 gauge half round dead soft wire. I got both of these from RioGrande.com, and if you head over to their website, these are the item numbers that you can put in to look up the exact thing I'm using. Of course, you don't have to use exactly what I'm doing. I do recommend that you use a solid type of wire, though, because we will be hammering this out a fair bit later on. So again, some 20 gauge half round and some 18 gauge round dead soft wire. Do check out the description section below if you're curious about the exact tools and materials I'm using as well as where you can purchase those. You might need to click the little show more button if you're on a computer or if you're on a smartphone. I think there's a little gray arrow triangle icon to the right of the video title. You can click that and then scroll down and they should show up for you. I will be referencing this kind of template pattern that I made as I go along. I will make this available for you guys in my Etsy shop for just a few dollars. Again, I'll leave the link in the description section below. This is a nice way to kind of show support for my shop and it makes this design a little bit easier to follow along. But if you're not able to purchase this for some reason, it's not necessary. I will try and make sure that you can create this without the template as well. So to get started, I'm going to take my 18 gauge round dead soft wire. We'll be cutting three different lengths of this, so let me go ahead and get this straightened out. First length we're going to cut will be 11 inches long. And then we're also going to cut a 10 inch piece. And finally we'll be cutting a 9 inch piece. So we've got our three different lengths here. I'm going to set the longer two aside and we'll start working with the shorter one. So we're just going to very simply bend this right in half to start out. So I'm going to make sure the tails are meeting up here and push it on down with my fingers until I get a point. And then I'm going to crimp this point on down with my chain nose pliers. Until it's pretty tight, I'm not going to mush them all the way together. I'm just going to get a fairly tight point there. And then I will spread these back apart a little bit. There we go, so we've got something like that. And now what we're going to do is start putting a nice little arc in these two wires. I'm going to bend them back over until they meet themselves. And where they meet is going to be the top of our pumpkin. And if you have the template and you want to follow along, you can make sure it's matching up to be spread out the same amount as on the template. But if you don't have the template for reference, this is going to be about 3 eighths of an inch wide at the widest point, and just about 1 inch high. So you can kind of make that the same shape. And then right where these tails are crossing over and meeting each other, I'm just going to take them off in opposite directions. So I'm going to pinch right where they're crossing and bend one off to the right. Again, pinch right where they're crossing and bend the other one off to the left. So we have something just like that. So this is going to be the top layer of our pumpkin. As you can see here, it's going to be that narrowest run right in the middle. Go ahead and pull out your 10 inch wire now. We're going to do the exact same thing, bending this right in half squeezing it together, making sure the tails are equal there. I'm going to squeeze it on down similarly until we get a tight little point. And then spread them back open. And now for this one we're going to do pretty much the same thing. We're going to make sure that it matches up so that it can layer right under this one. So I need to squeeze that down a little bit more, make that point a bit tighter. But what we're going to do is put kind of a little M shape in. So I'm going to grip maybe an eighth of an inch up from that bottom point, And then I'm going to push this wire on down. And I'll do the same thing on the other side so that we get a little M shape right there, kind of a little ripple. And it's a little too aggressively rippled, so I'm going to spread it out a little bit. I want it a little bit more gentle. There we go, and go ahead and make sure if you stack it behind your middle piece that it is matching up there, which it is. And again, if you have the template, you can double check on top of it that it's looking good. So I need to make mine a little bit more, I need to make mine a little bit more bent here. There we go. And then go ahead and pull out your round nose pliers, because we're going to take these ends back up. So I'm going to grip kind of halfway along my round nose pliers so that it fits in that little bend right there. I'm just pushing the round nose pliers up there. 
and I'm just going to swivel this on around so that we have something like that. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side, about halfway up my round nose pliers, pushing it right into that little bend and swinging that left hand tail all the way up as well so that we've got kind of a little ripple in the bottom of our pumpkin. And then this is a little wider than we need it to be, so I'm just going to use my chain nose pliers to push that on up a little bit more. There we go. And again, let me double check on my template here. That's looking pretty good. I might just need to tighten this one down a little bit more. There we go. And just for your reference, let me go ahead and show you the measurement on that. Those little ripples are going to be just about three quarters of an inch across in total. And then just like before, we're going to put a gentle bend in both of these wires, bringing them back so that they can cross over themselves here. So we'll just bend that one like that. And we'll bend this one like this. And you can use your fingers to shape this as well. You don't have to just be reliant on your round nose pliers. I'm just going to lay my smaller piece on top here so that I can kind of gauge what we need to be doing. So what we want to have is that these wires kind of swoop back down and join the center point. So I'm just going to grip right here with my round nose pliers and put a little bend in bringing this back down and around and we'll mirror image that on the other side doing the same thing so we've got a little bend in there and let me double check here that we're putting those bends in just about the right place looks like mine need to come down just a smidge so I'll go ahead and do that there we go and then we want to bring them back up so that they're heading in the same direction as the tails on this smaller piece. So I'm going to grip right here and swing it back up and around. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. So that we've got this kind of little ripple on the top as well as on the bottom. All right, so that's about what you should have. And let's just lay it all together and make sure it's shaping up how we want it to. What we're looking for here is that the bottom points overlap with each other so that we can put a wrap in there together and connect it all. And then we're looking for these top points to also all intersect so that we can wrap some wire over top of there. So as long as you've got those two things going on, you can have the exact shape be a little bit different from what I'm doing, but that is just about what we're looking for. So let's go ahead and pull out our 11 inch wire for the bottom and final piece. We're going to start this out the exact same way as the others, bending it right in half, making sure those tails are meeting each other, and pinching it on down to get a tighter point. There we go. And for this piece, what we're going to do is shape it exactly like the previous one that we did. So we're going to put these exact little ripples in. So I'm just going to start by doing that. I'm going to lay it over top of this other one that we've already made and recreate all those little bends, making sure they match up properly. So let's go ahead and do that, gripping right here with our round nose pliers. We'll start by putting in that little M shape. There we go. And each step, I'm going to just make sure that it's matching up. There we are. And then we'll bring these back up and around. Really just putting in a little series of ripples to make it look like the bottom of a pumpkin. There we are. These need to be tightened up just a little bit more. But now what we're going to do is take these back down and add another set of little ripples. So I'm going to just swing these back on around on both sides to put in another set of ripples. All right, and now we're going to double check on our template. So let's go ahead and double check on our template here. 
That's looking pretty good. And now we're going to, once again, swoop these on up and around to put in the sides of our pumpkin. Alright, and let me double check the width here. So these need to come in just a little bit. And you can even shape it right on top of your template if you have the template. And that will make your life a little bit easier. But if you don't, if you weren't able to get the template, I will give you the measurements for how wide your pumpkin should be in just a moment once I have it shaped here. So we're going to bring this on around. And this one as well. Alright, so let's go ahead and measure this and see how wide it is for those of you who don't have the template. We are sitting at about 1 and 3 eighths inches across at the widest point. So that should help you to follow along right there. And now what we're going to do, just like with this one, we're kind of going to swoop these back down so they dip down right before they join the stem area. So I'm going to pull out my round nose pliers once again. I'm just going to bend these down a little bit. We'll do that on both sides. And try and keep it symmetrical if you can, although it doesn't have to be perfectly symmetrical because pumpkins aren't like that in real life. Each one is somewhat unique. And then right where these are crossing together, right before that, I'm going to swing them back up and around. Alright, so there's one, and we'll do the same thing on the other side. so that we have that kind of little dipping down before it goes back up into the stem. Alright, and one last time I'm just going to double check that this is shaped properly by laying it over top of my template. And it looks like we need to bring these down a little bit more. Alright, so we've got our three different layers here, and you should be able to stack them over top of each other. And like I said before, you should be able to have that central bottom point match up on each of them, which is a little hard to do here with just my fingers, but you get the idea of what they're supposed to be doing. They should all meet together at that bottom point there, and again, they should all meet together up at that top point, so that it looks like this little diagram right here. So if they don't meet up like that, go ahead and make any little tweaks and adjustments that you need to. But we're going to press on ahead. What I'm going to do now is pull out my steel bench block and jeweler's hammer. And I'm just going to hammer out each layer individually so that we get this kind of pretty flattened out look here. What I'm going to do is focus mostly on the sides of each layer and less so on these bottom ripples. And we're not going to hammer these tails at all. So I'm going to go ahead and do that on each layer and we'll come back together. Alright, so after you're done hammering, you're going to want to go ahead and make sure that they all still stack together nicely and meet up at those points that we mentioned earlier, because of course hammering does tend to deform things a little bit, so you want to just make sure that they are still stacking up nicely. Alright, so this is the exciting point. We're actually going to start connecting all of this together now. So go ahead and pull out your 20 gauge half round wire. I'm just going to straighten this out so that we can cut a short little piece. It doesn't need to be too long or too exact, but just about three inches should work for us. So let's go ahead and cut that. There we go. And go ahead and keep your half round wire handy. We will be using that again in a moment. I'm just going to hold this right in the middle, making sure we have the flat side going down. I'm just going to put a little bend in there. And then go ahead and pull out all your layers of the pumpkin that we set aside earlier. And I'm just going to stack these up with the outermost layer on the bottom, and the middle one in the middle, and the innermost layer on the top. 
And I'm just going to stack them up so that all these little bottom points meet up together nicely. Okay, just like that. And then right in that center there where they all go over each other, I'm just going to drop our half round wire over that. And this is a little tricky until you get your first wrap in, so just be careful and go slow. I'm going to use my chain nose pliers to cross these tails over each other on the half round wire. And then I'm just going to start wrapping it around here. Tightening it as I go with each little wrap. There we go, and using this other tail as well. And I'm going to put three wraps in on the inside of this innermost layer. And after I have those three wraps, I'm going to transition it over and start wrapping on the right and left little humps there. So I'm going to go down into that middle section now with our half round wire. I'm pulling it nice and tight as we go, making sure that it is securing everything here. And I'm going to put in another three wraps on these side sections. Alright, I'm going to flip this over so that we kind of can... <laughs> I'm going to flip this over so I can work more easily being right-handed here. So again, coming up just like that. And I'm just going to adjust this because I want this middle wrap with the half round wire to be sitting right in the middle of that point there. And then we'll wrap again three times on the side section here. Okay, so that should have secured that together very nicely for you. And let's double check that everything is lining up how we want it to. Very good, so you should have something that looks like that now. And let's go ahead and cut another piece of our 20 gauge half round wire, so pulling that on out. This time I'm going to cut a longer piece. I'm going to cut one that's just about 12 inches long here. And I'm going to work kind of near the end of this piece. What we're going to do is just lay it over top of where all these wires intersect each other. I have about a three inch portion right there. I'm just going to start wrapping this around where all our wires intersect each other. You might need to use your chain nose pliers to get these wraps nice and tight. So I'm going to wrap that all three or four times around there just to secure all of that. There we go. So you should have something like that. And I'm going to save these tails, but we can go ahead and snip off the other tails down on the bottom. So I'm going to go around to the back so that we can kind of hide these in an unobtrusive place. So using my flush cutters, I'm just going to snip those off and smush the ends on down close to the design. There we go. We'll do the same thing on the other side here. Alright, so now at this point we need to use all these wires coming off of here to create the bale and these decorative little swirls. So we're just going to take the back layer first, so the if we go to the back we're going to take the two wires that are closest to us, so the back two wires. I'm just going to take them so they're going straight right next to each other. You might need to straighten them out a little bit. So we've got the back two wires going straight now. And facing the front once again, I'm just going to kind of pull these two wires so they're coming a little bit more towards the front of the pumpkin. And then using this long tail of the half round wire that we have here, I'm just going to start wrapping it around both of those two wires. All right, so this first wrap, I wanna make sure that I kind of push it down towards this other wrap that we have here as far as I can. And then I'm just going to start wrapping it around trying to put each wrap right next to the previous one that we made. You might need to use your chain nose pliers to encourage that. 
wrapping it on around, making sure that we keep the flat part against our 18 gauge wires. And once we get a few good wraps started here, it should go more easily for you. And we're just going to keep going here, wrapping this on around until we have about a one and a half inch length, a little less, of our wraps here. All right, and I have used up my wrapping wire, so I'm just going to snip it off here and smush it on down. And now we're just going to use this wrapped part to create the bail, so I'm going to push it a little more towards the front here, so we've got something like that. And then I'm just going to start arcing it around to create a little bend. And you can use your round nose pliers here if you need to to help shape it. And this is actually winding up to be a bit larger of a bale than I want here. As you can see on this one I've already made, it's a bit shorter. So what I'm going to do is just unwrap a little bit of that length that we wrapped there. Just a smidgen, so let me find where I secured that end and pull it back up. I'm just going to unwrap maybe a quarter inch or so of it. Not too hard to do. There we go, and we'll once again snip that end off and secure it on the back so that we can just kind of make that bale a little bit smaller. We don't need to have it be quite so crazy big. Alright, now what we're actually going to do, we want to wrap all these eight wires together. So what I'm going to do is undo that temporary wrap we did holding this all together so that we can take this wire around the back of the bale and secure it as well. So I'm just going to start undoing this. There we go, so that we can take it around all the wires it was around before as well as that back bale wire. Okay, so I'm just going to wrap it around all of them. And you might need to pinch your bale closed a little bit so that those wires are laying next to each other so that you can actually wrap them a bit more easily. So going around all of them here, and you should have room for three or four wraps around that whole situation. And I'm using my chain nose pliers to push everything together, make sure it's nice and secure. There we go. So as you can see now, we have secured that bale. It is closed nicely for us. And that will allow us to hang this on a chain very securely. And then on the back, I'm just going to snip off this excess 20 gauge wire that we have so that we can push it on down and secure it. So I'm just going to find a little space where we can tuck it in. and push it on down so that there's no sharp bits that'll poke you as you're wearing this necklace. And now to finish off these two tails that are coming from the bale, I'm just going to push them on up very tightly on either side, just like that, and snip off, allowing maybe a quarter inch or so here We'll do that on both sides, making sure we're snipping the same length of wire on either side. That one might need a little more off. There we go. And I'm just going to push these on towards the bale. And I'm going to put a gentle little curve in so that they're kind of looping around. And 
this one's a little longer than the other side. There we go. And I'm just going to push them on until those loose ends touch the bale. And we're going to do that on both sides to finish off those ends. So they're kind of looping up and around in a decorative way, even though they're on the back, we want it to look nice and finished as well. Okay, so that's how we finished off those two wires. And then coming back around to the front, we have these other two sets of tails that we need to finish off. And we're going to use these to start putting in some of the decorative little swirls, all right? So I'm going to take the right two wires, and I'm just going to loop them up around and in front of the bale. So using my fingers, I'm just going to start wrapping them around so that they come over top of that bale, kind of cover it up a little bit. Bringing them all the way around to put in a little loop right there. So as you can see, we've just created that shape. And then I'm going to wrap them around to put another little complete swirl in right there. All right, so working with my fingers, I'm just going to continue wrapping these tails on around. So that we can put in a little swirl shape and you might need to switch over to your chain nose pliers. All right, so we've put that little swirl in right there. And then I'm just going to continue swooping these on towards the right so that they go over the top of the pumpkin there, just like that. And now I'm going to put in another little loop just with the topmost of these two wires. So taking the topmost one and my round nose pliers, I'm just going to put a little wrapped little loop right in here. Just like that. And we want it to be fairly small. So I'm going to close it on up with my chain nose pliers. for these two little ends, I'm just going to swirl them towards the left and position them kind of decoratively over top of the pumpkin. Open little spiral here, and we might need to cut off some of this length and shorten it up a little bit, but let's just see what we're working with. Yeah, and I think I'm going to need to take off a little bit of that because I want it to sit a little bit higher up on the pumpkin. So we'll just take off little bits of it until we get the swirl to sit in the right position where we want it to. And what I want is for this little swirl to sit over top of this right hand edge of the pumpkin so that we can put a little binding point in there and connect it all together. So let's go ahead and swirl this top wire now. And I want this swirl to be a little bit smaller. As you can see, we want it to sit on top of that one. So let's just go ahead and cut this a little bit shorter so that we can get a smaller little swirl in. Maybe I might need to take off even a little bit more than that. And as before, we're just going to put in an open little spiral here. We want this one to be a bit smaller, so I'm working on the very tips of my round nose pliers. And once you've got it started, you can refine it with your chain nose pliers, tightening, tightening it on down there to put in a smaller little swirl. And I'm actually going to take off a little bit more 
to make it even smaller. So that we have something more like that. And what we're looking for is for both of these squirrels to cross over top of that right edge of the pumpkin right there so that we can bind them together. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to pull out a little scrap piece of my 20 gauge half round wire that I had left over. And you can just cut a one and a half inch piece or so if you don't have a scrap piece. But I'm just going to bend that right in half and drop it over that point over both of the swirls and over the rightmost edge of our pumpkin wire. I'm just going to cross those over and put a nice tight little wrap in there to connect those swirls to the frame so that they're not going to be shifting around. Okay, and I'm going to bring this tail on around and push it down through this space over the larger lower wire and the edge of the frame. Tighten that on up. And then for this tail that we have going back behind, let's flip over to the back so that we can see what we're doing. I'm just going to wrap this a few times just around the frame wire to secure it in place. So I'm going to kind of finagle it around so that I can push that tail up through just the frame wire right there. So going behind the swirls, not over them. And that will allow us to wrap this a couple times just around that frame wire to secure this half round wrapping wire in place. So I'm going to wrap that through there two or three times, pulling it nice and tight each time just to secure that. So that's what it should look like on the front. And then on the back we will just snip these off so that they'll be hidden as you're looking at it from the front. And using your chain nose pliers, you can push those ends on down to secure them. Okay, and double checking with your fingers that it's nice and smooth. So now we just have two more little tails to secure. We've made some pretty good progress. So I'm just going to start bending these off towards the left hand side. And then the lower of the two wires. I'm going to put a little loop in right here, so wrapping it all the way around. Putting a little swirly loop in right there. And then the other wire I'm going to do the same thing, wrapping it around. And I want that loop to be a little bit smaller because we're kind of mirror imaging to some extent that loop right there. So I'm just going to tighten it up just a little bit more. There we go. What we're actually going to do with this longer wire that's heading off to the right is tuck it right inside of there. So I'm going to snip this off. Let's swirl it around a little bit more first. And I'm going to snip this tail off so that we can push it back down behind and hide it inside of there. Okay, so maybe even a little bit shorter than that. And using the very tips of my chain nose pliers, I'm just going to continue that loop and push it down inside of that space. All right. So that that is hidden down inside of there. As you can see, we finished off that one end. And then finally, with this one remaining wire that we have, I'm just going to put a little swirl in right here. So I'm going to wrap this on around to put one final little open spiral in right here. And we will snip off the excess wire. and tighten that on down so that we have a smaller little spiral. Might need to take off even a little bit more. And 
There we, there we go. And as you can see here, we're just going to connect it to secure. And what I might actually do on this one, I connected it to the middle layer. But on this one, because it's turning out just a smidge differently, and that is normal. Every time you make a wire wrap design, it's going to be a little different than the first one. I think I'm actually going to connect it right there to the outer wire. So let's go ahead and cut another little length of our 20 gauge half round wire. Doesn't need to be too long. It's probably about two inches or so will get the job done for us. I'm just going to bend that right in half with the flat side down, just like we've been doing all along. And I'm going to drop it over that point where that little swirl crosses over the outer edge of our pumpkin. And I'm going to put two little wraps around that swirl. Pulling it nice and tight. And then to secure this, I'm going to wrap this tail a couple times just around the frame wire. And we'll do the same thing with this other tail. Wrapping it around just the frame wire. And then on the back, we will snip off those tails. And push them on down to secure. So there we have it. That is our little pumpkin. All nice and finished here as you can see. I'm just going to do a few little finishing touches to make sure everything is lying flat how I want it to. As you can see here on this one, I did go ahead and give it an antique finish. And I have done a tutorial on how I antique copper with liver of sulfur. I will leave a link to that. If you check in the upper right hand corner of your screen here, there's going to be a lowercase i icon. If you click on that, it'll open up the link to where you can go see how to antique this with liver of sulfur. But of course, it is very pretty as is. You don't have to do that. And as you can see here, I did finish this off with a decorative little front close chain with these little wrapped beads. I did do a tutorial on these last week if you want to check that out and see how I created those. I will leave a link to that as well, again in the upper right hand corner. And I've also done a tutorial on how to make these decorative handmade little hook and loop clasps as well. I feel like that really finishes this design off and makes it even more fancy and pretty as you can see there. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial, found it helpful and easy to follow. If you did, please leave me a thumbs up below this video and click that little subscribe button if you haven't already. If you also click the bell icon and turn on all notifications, you will just receive an email from YouTube anytime I post a new video. I do have a lot more planned that will be coming out here, so you can do that to make sure you don't miss out on any of my new tutorials. Feel free to leave a comment in the comments section below if you made this, let me know how it turned out. And also, if you have any questions along the way, you can leave a comment, and I will try and check there and answer those questions for you. Thank you guys so very much for watching. I hope you are enjoying your fall here, staying safe and well. I will catch you in the next video. Happy crafting!